Okay, in the last uh, video, what we talked about was the relationship between temperature and pressure during evaporation or a phase change. Um, so let's just recap what we saw there and how it's going to relate to steam tables. So when we saw that there was a change of phase that occurred, um, what we had was a case where across our boiling, uh, we had a constant temperature and that was related to the temperature and pressure inside of our steam tables. Saturation pressure and saturation temperature. Um, and if we escaped that boiling point, what we could do is either superheat or else we could heat up that liquid. So that's what we, we had in terms of uh, boiling profile. What we identified was that we had a couple of key points here um, and in between them what we had what was known as the saturated region. So inside of here um, what we had is is saturated steam. And so for this section here we have properties that go along with it. This is where we'd consider to be 100% liquid, saturated. Um, we have a specific component inside of our tables to identify that. This is going to be the saturated liquid section, so 100% liquid saturated. Um, it has an identifier which is F okay just it's for fluid um that's how i remember that um and then as well what we have is over here we've got another point so 100 percent water comes in and this is where it boils over here is 100 percent steam again we would consider it still saturated at that point and this guy has an identifier um, and it is G and uh, I consider that to be for a gas so steam being a gas um, that's our G properties so if you look at the steam tables so I've opened up to say table 1 table 2 has the same layout just pressure and temperature are reversed um, but what I have is a few different sections. So say, for instance, if I looked at specific volume, uh, what I'd have is saturated liquid, specific volume. It's the symbol VF. Uh, and what I have is saturated vapor, VG. So what this talks about is what is the property if I had 100% liquid that had just got to the saturation point? And then what would be the properties if I had 100% saturated vapor that had just got to the point of completely boiling? Um, and you can see I have the same type of G's and F that exist in the other, the other sections. Don't worry about the FG just for now. We're going to see that what that actually means in just a second. Okay, so let's go through a few exercises of actually locating and finding what the values are uh, out of our steam tables. Okay, so find the following using the saturated temperature or pressure table. Basically, if we're given a temperature, we're going to go to the temperature table. If we're given a pressure, we're going to go to the pressure table. So enthalpy of saturated vapor at 250 degrees Celsius. So gives me a temperature, so I'm going to go to the temperature table. So if I bring up my temperature table, well, this is no good. I'm in my pressure table, so I'm going to have to go to the next page down. Oops. And what I want to get is, just double check, the enthalpy saturated vapor. Okay, so what this is going to be is going to be H, which is enthalpy. And because it's vapor, it's going to be G. 
So I'm looking for HG at 250 degrees. Switch back to my tables. Um, well, this is my HG column. Let's come down here. And what I'm looking for is at 250 degrees. Um, there's my column. So 2801.5. So HG is equal to 2801.5. Um, if you're looking for units for any of these, what you want to do is go to the very first page of the table. So before even any of the data is shown, and it lists out the, the units. So in this case, at enthalpy kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, if I wanted to find some other values, so in this case, HF at 4,000 kPa. Okay, well, it's given me in pressure. So instead of the temperature table that I was using back here, I'm going to go to my pressure table. HF, the enthalpy of saturated liquid. So let's go ahead and check that guy out. So HF at a 4,000 kPa. So there's two pages to this table. I'm on the second page. So 4,000 is here, and HF is down here. So where I intersect there, 1087.31. zero. 87.31 again same units kilojoules per kilogram um let's look at hfg i won't tell you what it is just yet uh, let's go find the value at 100 degrees and let's see what it is so hfg at 100 degrees celsius so again back to my temperature table because it's temperature And my HFG column, so here I am on my temperature base table. So HFG is down here. And 100 across, uh, 2257. 2257. Um, does that value ring a bell? We've used it before. Um, what we use that was the latent heat of, of vaporization. So latent heat of vaporization was my HFG. And what that's telling me is the amount of energy that has to go in to liquid in order to turn it into steam. So this is the amount of energy that I need in order to fully evaporate. And if we look at that table, um, what you can see is that HFG changes. So it's not always 2257. I was I hope careful to say that it was at atmospheric conditions, but if I'm hotter or colder or under different pressures, uh, the latent heat is going to be variable. But we know that at 100, our standard is 2257, and uh, there it is represented right in the tables. So just remember, HFG represents your latent heat of vaporization or the amount of heat required to boil a substance completely. Um, okay, so let's look at this. Specific volumes of saturated liquid and vapor at 100 kPa. So we'll go to our pressure table because we're at 100 kPa. That was our temperature table. 
This was our pressure table, but our pressure's too high here. And we're going to go up here to our pressure-based table for saturated steam at 100 kPa. Um, so if I look here, oops, oops, sorry. What I have is a couple of values. So uh, let's round it up. So like 1.04 for my VF, my saturated liquid, and 1694. 1.04 and 1694. Um, this was my VF. This was my VG. Um, Units for these guys are a little goofy. Um, what they are is centimeters cubed per gram, um, which is a little bit goofy. Um, also, if you look at your table at the front, what you'd see is that it also has an alternate unit, which is 1694 um, times 10 to the negative 3 cubic meters per kilogram, which is a little more useful for us in engineering. Um, but we've got a movement of the decimal places. So just be aware that you've got um, a couple of units that may be a little bit goofy if we're talking about volume. Um, we're not going to use volume too much uh, right now in the course, but just wanted to point out something. One of the big benefits of steam is that first of all, can hold a lot of energy. So it stores a lot of energy when we have our phase change. The second thing that happens is that it has a lot of expansion capabilities. So if you look at the difference here, um, steam in the liquid form, or sorry, water in the liquid form compared to steam, uh, well, at atmospheric conditions, I have about uh, 1,700 times more volume occupied by steam as I do for the liquid state. So I have a huge amount of expandability with, with steam. I've got a few more uh, pieces. Saturation temperature at 40 kPa. So if we go to our tables, um, 40 kPa, saturation temperature, 75.87 it doesn't even boil at 100 degrees so 75.87 so if i drop below atmospheric i'm going to boil at a lower temperature than the 100 and then internal energy of dry saturated vapor at 13000 kpa so Let's go to 13,000 kPa. I use the term there, dry saturated. Um, sometimes when we talk about 100% saturated vapor, uh, what we talk about is this guy being dry. So it doesn't have any liquid left in it. We consider liquid to be wet, vapor to be dry. This is 100% dry. So in that case, what I was talking about was my G properties. So at 13,000, the internal energy, 2496.1. Oops. <laughs> 2496.1. And those are kilojoules per kilogram. Should be a J.